I shall now put the motion. Move to vote. Please. Those in favor, please say aye. aye. Those against, please, will please say no. I think eyes have it, the eyes have it, the eyes have it. The motion is adopted. Take, taking, taking, one second, I'll, I'll come to you. Taking a conspicuous view of his continued misconduct, violation of directions and blatant disregard of his, uh, the rules of the House, I find it expedient to refer the matter as indicated earlier to the Committee of Privileges. Further, I invoke Rule 266, read with Rule 256, that suspension order dated 24 July 2023 in respect of Sri Sanjay Singh may continue beyond the current session till the Council has the benefit of recommendation by the Committee of Privileges. Honorable, one second. Honorable members, when someone gets into Parliament, it's a historical achievement. And when someone gets into the upper house, Council of States, House of Elders, as compared to Lok Sabha, the term is six years. This house, house is ever in continuity, unlike Lok Sabha. Then it's a privilege and honor to be ever remembered. If in this house, we fail to live up to the highest expectations of the people, framers of the Constitution, we are abdicating our constitutional obligations. Let me invite attention of the honorable members. Constituent Assembly met for three years. It had 18 sessions. Some of the most divisive, difficult issues, contentious issues came up for deliberation. They engaged in dialogue, discussion, debate, deliberation, and had behind the scene negotiations. But there was not a single instance of disruption or disturbance, much less members getting into the well of the house. The honorable leader of the house said one or two instances of coming to the well may be condoned in this chair. I would not agree to that. Even one misdemeanor of a member coming to the well is painful. The member is not aware that his conduct will find disapproval by more than 1.3 billion people. How can a member come to the well, get away from his seat, and still try to make a contribution? Disorder cannot be allowed to be the order of the House. This has been weaponized as a political strategy, and that is anti-democratic, anti-constitutional. It will be very difficult for me, sitting in this chair, to overlook such kind of transgressions. Let me invite your attention that this country came to have ethics committee in late 90s. And the first chairman of the Ethics Committee was a veteran parliamentarian, a man who held high positions in the government, both in the Ministry of Home and Finance, Sri S. Bichavan. He rendered a report to this House on 1st December 1998, and he indicated framework of code of conduct for members of Rajya Sabha. The members of Rajya Sabha should acknowledge their responsibility to maintain the public trust reposed in them and should work diligently to discharge their mandate for the common good of the people. They must hold in high esteem the Constitution, the law, and Parliament institutions, and above all, general public. They should constantly strive to translate the ideals laid down in the preamble of the Constitution into a reality. The following are the principles which they should abide by their dealings. I'll refer to only two of the principles. One, members must not do anything that brings disrepute to the Parliament and affects their credibility. 
I'll pause here for a moment. Coming to the well, rising on the seat, shouting slogans, coming with a garland of tomatoes. Where are we heading? Where are we heading? Forget about the people at large. Your blood relations, your near and dear ones will not approve of it. And it is now 25 years since this report was put before this house. And the second one, members are expected to maintain high standards of morality, dignity, decency, and values in public life. Each word getting outraged, I must share my concern with the honorable members. What I saw in last few days, challenging manner with physical dimension, daring the chair virtually, what the chair can do. I have been extremely indulgent. But those of the members who have come in utter disregard, it has pained me. It was no rejoicing for me that even a senior advocate, Mr. Vivek Dhanka, came into the well. A man holding high position in the legal fraternity, and you engage into such kind of transgressions. Imagine if this happens in a court of law, what the consequences will be. Ours is a much elevated institution. We have to decide the fate of every other institution in the country. We are repository of the power to ensure constitutional institutions continue to be within their bounds. I therefore appeal to you, earnestly appeal to you and plead with you, please informally reach out to your friends on the other side and discuss with them. Otherwise, the consequences for us will be that we'll surge into irrelevance. And that being the situation, the point is very clear. It is perhaps towards the end of the road that we must awaken ourselves and do our duties. I'll take up the next item. Okay. Uh, Mr. Gupta, are you on your seat? Now, just imagine. How can I give it to you, see? I don't have to tutor you every day. You were not in your seat. And that is why I did not hear you. You will have a grievance. Sit down for a minute. <clears throat> no, no, you will have a grievance. You will have a grievance. I did not hear you. Why? I am at least bound by rules. I was telling you at that point of time, number of times that rule has been read out in the house, that you can speak only from your chair. And this can't be our norm. We have to exemplify our conduct by our actions so that people at large emulate us. They take us as role models. But right now, if they take us role models, then what will happen to the nation at large? I am afraid I am unable to... No. Honorable members, we have come to the conclusion of the 260th session of the Rajya Sabha. Let us make an assessment of the ground we have covered in our journey towards meaningful governance and legislative action. Let me tell you, in Lok Sabha, the Honorable Home Minister, for more than an hour, reflected, more than an hour reflected only on Manipur. The Honorable Prime Minister, in his discourse, focused on Manipur, indicated to the nation a soothing and healing touch. Ab socho, humne kya khoya, kya paya. On 20th of December, on the very first day, 
when the matter came up for consideration, the government had immediately agreed after I had accepted the notice. It was my discretion, my judgment to accept the notice that this House must debate Manipur. The debate did not take place. It, the, it was listed in supplementary list of business. I had indicated to the entire House the short duration discussion is limited to two and a half hours. I invoked my authority under the rules and said, I will keep it open-ended. Members of the House are extremely and enormously talented. We have Padma awardees of the highest category here, three of them. This House, on account of unruly conduct, indecorous behavior, could not avail the historic opportunity of guiding the Lok Sabha on Manipur. And that was on account of our actions. This was very painful. Once again, we yielded to the allure of narrow interests and allowed disorder to be the new normal in the proceedings of the House. It appears that my appeals have not resonated well with our members. The frequent and wholesome spectacle of disruptions only indicates that my message has not found the attentive audience it deserves. I would be open to any kind of idea. I have interacted with the honorable members, floor leaders in my chamber, and they agreed with me. And once they come to the House, things are otherwise. It's a very some alarming scenario. A total of 44 hours and 58 minutes during the 17 sittings of the House were lost due to avoidable disruptions adversely impinging on our overall productivity of this session. The people at large are in pain. They have got us elected here. They are sustaining us by their fiscal power. It's a heavy drain on exchequer. Our accountability and transparency has no dives. Can we allow such a scenario to continue? Honorable members, we have been able to pass few bills during the session that witnessed some lively and animated debate. We could take up questions on a few occasions, but I feel the productivity of the question hour could have been much better. I will make an appeal to media also. It pains me when media carries a news report. Rajya Sabha passes bills in absence of opposition. It is factually wrong. Media is required to be on tenable factual ground. The members chose not to perform their constitutional duty by being present. They walked out not from the House, but from their solemn duty, their constitutional obligations. And therefore, such kind of reporting by media, I appeal to media to be more sensitive to the sentiments of the people at large and properly, fairly report the proceedings of the House. Rajya Sabha also witnessed a positive development while giving fair representation to our dynamic women members to be part of the panel of vice chairman. I wish to utilize their innate managerial skills for the smooth conduct of the proceedings of the House. And friends, this decision was taken after careful deliberation. And I get a feel that women chairpersons have performed from this chair in a manner which is of the highest standards. When for the first time, P.T. Usha, who got a Padma Award in the 80s, sat on this chair, I got messages from all over the globe that she has glorified this position. This gave me the spinal strength to put more honorable women members of this, par uh, this house in the chair. The first member of parliament from Nagaland, Koinak. Remarkable performance. And the same applies to others. I think 
they have vindicated their role, made us proud. In a similar vein, the Secretary in a laudable move undertook a progressive initiative to empower its women employees by affording them the opportunity to at attend to the significant table duties within hallowed chambers. Right now, you'll see all four are women. And there was a time when somebody sent it for the first time. I could see in media later on. On the chair was a lady member of this house. The speaker was a lady member. And the table was occupied by lady employees. And that photograph has been appreciated all around. Not from? Area, but w during her conduct, she speaks good Hindi, sir. You should acknowledge that. Or, aapko batao, main manne mantri si. I have had involved interaction with all of them at Uprashtrapati Nivas, and I have come to know about her outstanding contributions. She is a leader in her own right. I wouldn't see a potential challenge to the Honorable Minister. As a matter of fact, let me report to this House. Next session, I'll be having another team because many have interacted with me and they have a huge commitment to their duty, huge experience. Some of them have come from serpents to this level. They have led uh, empowerment of women programs extensively with attend attendance of thousands. But your point is well taken. Oh, members, <laughs> honorable members, the secretariat in another commendable endeavor is started a two week Rajya Sabha internship program with inaugural batch of 20 interns from northeastern states. I had the occasion to be with them, along with the Honorable Minister Sonawalji. I had dinner with them yesterday. Look at the brightness in their eyes, the kind of experience they had, and at the highest level attention was paid to their internship. A 1991 batch IAS officer, secretary to Rajya Sabha, was overlooking everything and they will carry our message in the entire region. This program we will continue. I have no doubt our young interns gained better understanding and insights and had this house been in a functional mode, it would have been much better. When one of the interns told me, we have been to the convention center, the second one said, we have been to Prime Minister's museum. And the description was so vivid, as if I was in the museum. So that's a great achievement. We'll take it further. Honorable members, I have given certain rulings and made some observations, keeping in mind the expectation of the people from this August House. I know some of them may have been bitter, but I have suffered many such observations as a senior advocate from the court. The court is never um, ill-motivated against any lawyer. They make observations only to ensure that we rise up in our contributory mechanism in a positive manner. I have made that. I have taken a very few painful decisions, and that was in difference to my constitutional obligation. And the respect I have for this esteemed house, if I had not taken those unpalatable decisions, then your respect for me would have gone down. I must express my deep sense of gratitude to Honorable Deputy Chairperson. A man of enormous patience, gifted with intellect, and always gave me sagacious advice. We interacted every day of the session. 
though I am always uh, careful to deal with journalists, and he is one, but then his disarming approach brought us together. But for him, things would not have been as productive from our perspective as they have been. Honorable members, to have an experienced, talented man as Secretary General is a great asset. Having discussed the matter with him on two occasions, everything about the Secretariat, the buck stops on his table. I have enough time to deal with my other duties. He has created a new energetic mechanism for the employees. And in togetherness, we all are determined that our Secretariat employees are the best we can have. And we are determined to empower them. And our digitization, we are not making formal most things by declarations. We have accomplished. Our paper consumption has been reduced to 50%. And SG, Secretary General, a former chairman of CBDT, he knows the enforcement is that we buy only 50%. So you, you can't consume more than you buy. So we buy only 50%. Honorable members, to conclude, our greetings for the 77th Independence Day and a vast array of festivals that await all of us. Thank you. Jai Hind. We'll rise. One stands adjourned sinodine. <laughs>